Okay, hello Year 10 and welcome to uh, another week of home learning. This is week 3 um, and we're going to look at the topic of terminal velocity in our forces and motion topic. Okay, so I'm just going to use these um, a few slides just to run through through a few of the details for this week's tasks. Okay, there is a separate video as well which accompanies this for the practical task that I'd like you to try and attempt this week. Okay, so just to run through what we're going to um, talk about. So there is a Kahoot quiz as your starter. Um, the pin code is there. The link for it is also provided on Go for Schools and Teams. Okay, so have a go at that. It's just recapping your um, quickfire knowledge of the tasks, the uh, topic we've, as we've been doing so far. We're then going to just have a little look at a video um, around the science of skydiving. I'm then going to go through some of the key points around terminal velocity. Okay, um, There is a worksheet that I'd like you to then have a, a go at, um, answering and filling in some of the questions. And then the main task this week is a home practical experiment. Okay, And I'll run through some detail about that uh, and explain how that works. And then the consolidation task I've set is a Seneca assignment um, that's titled Forces in Motion Recap. Um, and that is uh, has been assigned to you. Um, and again, that recaps some of the stuff that we've been doing over the past couple of weeks. OK, so first of all, OK, um, just look, this is a video that um, demonstrates, OK, how a parachute, what happens during a parachute journey. Okay, so if we think about the motion of the parachutist as they jumped from the plane, um, as they were skydiving, um, what happened to them as they traveled through the air and fell to, to the ground? Okay, their velocity, which is the yellow line here, obviously increased very dramatically um, as they were falling initially from the plane. And then it gradually started to slow. Okay, in, that is the increase in their speed. Okay, they didn't they didn't slow down, but their increase in speed started to slow until they reached a point where they were not going any faster. They were just continuing at the same speed. Okay, and what that point is is termed as their terminal velocity. Okay, so they couldn't go any faster than they were going, and you can see that by that flat line on that graph there. And then at some point they opened their parachute. Okay, so here obviously the speed increases and then their terminal velocity is reached. And then when they opened their parachute, okay, they slowed down. Now, a common misconception here is that the uh, when they open their parachute, they go upwards. Um, that you may or may not be aware is just a trick of a camera. Um, it just is because the the person holding the camera does not open their parachute at the same time. So they continue at the same speed, whereas the person who's opened their parachute slows down very, very dramatically, as you can see from the drop in this curve. OK, so their, their velocity um, comes down very, very quickly until they reach a new lower terminal velocity. So that until they reach a point where their speed is no longer decreasing, they're traveling at the same speed, falling at the same speed, um, but a much lower speed than they were falling before. And obviously that speed needs to be slow enough that when they hit the ground, they are not injured. OK, so that obviously that slow speed that they, they want to reach by opening the parachute um, needs to be much, much slower than it is up here. 
Okay, so that is the kind of velocity time graph for a parachutist. Now, if they were to carry out that on the moon, it would look very different. Okay, and I want you to write down why you think that would be. What is it about the difference between on Earth and on the moon that would mean that their terminal velocity over time would just gradually increase on the moon? Okay, even if they opened their parachute. So, what you're going to look at first of all is describing that process. So there is a um, uh, a worksheet that I have attached to Go for Schools and for Teams that looks like this. Okay, and there are three parts to it. Okay, so the first part says describe the motion at each stage of the sky driver's divers jump. So you just need to write in this part what happens to the motion of the skydiver. Okay, so are they falling? Are they falling at a greater speed? Are they traveling at a slow speed? Whatever you think would be the, the actual motion that they are, uh, are carrying out. The second column is about why that motion is, is the way it is. So try and explain it, okay, using your knowledge of forces that you already have. And then the third thing is to draw arrows on this diagram to show all of the forces that are acting on the skydiver at different points. So initially, at the moment of leaving the plane, what happens? Okay, what are the forces that are acting on them? And as they kind of travel through the air, and then they reach terminal velocity, and you'll see that it carries on a bit further. Okay, um, go back and watch the video that um, is on this PowerPoint that uh, I've just shown you. That will help you as well. Okay, any questions, let me know. And then the main task for today is a home experiment. And as I said, there's a separate uh, video for this that I will um, share with you. The, the link for that will be on, on Go for Schools and for Teams. And it's for you to create your own parachute and to have a go at getting some measurement, measurements for terminal velocity. OK, so the instructions are here. You'll need a, a sheet of A4 paper or roughly A4 and you'll need a, to draw a large circle using maybe a plate or something. Now, I'm not going to go through these instructions because as I say the, the video itself will explain it in a lot more detail. OK, but you need to essentially once you've created your parachute, your mini cone, OK, choose somewhere in your house, OK, from which to drop it and time it three times and record your results. If you can get somebody else to help you, that would be brilliant because then you can concentrate either on the dropping or the timing. Um, you're going to then adjust your parachute okay, and continue taking measurements until you have um, completed it, until you've uh, got a, a, a set of, of results. Draw a table and then if you have graph paper or if you've got software pocket package, you can draw a graph of your data. Um, you can draw a graph freehand as well. okay. Um, it obviously won't be quite as easy, but you can certainly do that. OK, so that's the all of the introduction I wanted to give for this week's tasks. I'm just going to leave you with this little video of um, somebody who a few years ago uh, decided to take skydiving to the absolute extreme. You may have heard of someone called Felix Baumgarter, OK, who holds now holds the world record for the highest free fall. So I'm just going to leave you watching this.
Okay. Uh, have a good week, and I will speak to you again next week. Bye for now.